Some of the chickens are hanging out outside, getting some fresh air, catching the last rays of sun of the day before it dips down again to minus 20. I think it's about minus 16 right now. What are you guys doing? Well guys, we are officially into the grips of winter now. The last couple nights dipped down into the negative 20s. Even Lake Superior, our little bay right out there, has finally frozen over. Which is good because we can get out there to do some ice fishing pretty soon now. But. Let's take a quick little look at our winter greenhouse, see what's growing, and what our plans are until spring arrives and we can start planting in the gardens. I guess now, at this point, this will be the beginning of our third year growing in this greenhouse that we've built specifically to be able to grow vegetables year round. Last year, we weren't terribly successful. We did grow some lettuce and things like that for a little while. So last fall, we were prepared, a little more prepared, and we had plants that we had started specifically to move into the greenhouse to grow over the winter. So maturing or mature plants, those included celery, kale, some peppers, but we've almost exhausted what we can get out of those plants. So now it's time to beef things up in there, get some new seeds started, and see what we can grow moving forward. It's the beginning of January right now. Here is our little winter greenhouse. It's about nine feet by 12 feet. As I mentioned, it was built with reclaimed lumber from a cabin on the property. The greenhouse has two by six framing and everywhere that you do not see a window has been insulated for that full six inches and sealed in with spray foam and other types of insulation that we just came across or had laying around the property. So let's go inside and see what we have growing on. I'm gonna turn this fan off here. There we go, that'll make it easier to talk. It's nice and warm in here at the moment, between 20 and 22 degrees, depending on the sensor you're looking at. Have various sensors around the greenhouse here. One in the corner back here. Here's another sensor down here, leaning right up against the window. And the reason I have various sensors is because I want to be able to measure where the warm spots and the cold spots are in the greenhouse. And a big part of the reason for that is where to put this thermostat. We're primarily heating with wood in the greenhouse. This particular stove is extremely oversized for this greenhouse. It's massive. That's what you want. You want a giant heat bank inside the greenhouse. It's daytime, so I just have this smoldering right now because the sun is shining in. But when it comes to overnight, we're running this electric heater for backup. This backup heater gets turned on by this thermostat. So I had to figure out exactly where to put this thermostat in order to get the best time for that to turn on. That required me to be sitting inside the greenhouse for a few hours over the course of a few nights, just moving the sensors around in here, trying to figure out where the best spot to put that thermostat was going to be. On a day like today, when the sun is shining bright, you don't need to feed the stove at all. The greenhouse, takes care of that itself. It captures all of that sunlight and converts it into heat. When the sun sets, that's when I load this thing right up. Load it up as full as I can get it and just let it burn and smolder all night long. Now, if that burns out throughout the night, that's when this kicks in. Thermostat down here, I have set to turn on at 10 degrees Celsius. So when it hits 10 degrees down here, that fires up, means I can sleep in a little bit later. This fan is also key to air circulation. Because we have various pockets in here that get cold, especially in the corners near the windows, 
So this fan, which is normally running 24-7, just helps to kill those dead spots and keep the air moving around, keep the whole place nice and warm. The back wall here is 2x6 construction. It is fully insulated across the entire back wall. And the ceiling is also insulated where we do not have windows. Now you might be wondering and wanting to ask me, how much wood does it take to keep a greenhouse like this warm throughout the winter, especially in the north here? I can't answer that. It's entirely dependent on the weather. Every single day is different. Every single night is different. You just have to keep an eye on things, monitor the temperatures, and keep feeding the stove as needed. So the big question, what do we have growing in here now? And how did we start these plants? We'll start with the kale. Last summer, we started these kale plants in pots. Some we also dug up out of the garden, this larger one, for example. And it really helped us moving into winter, having larger plants, mature plants, that were ready to start feeding us as soon as we wanted them. You can see new growth coming on. We're taking probably two to three meals a week, maybe more, off of these plants. There's only two of us here, so these five plants have done us well. I may actually start more next year to use over the winter, just so that we have the option of more kale meals if we want. We are big fans of celery, really big fans of celery. This stuff goes into a lot of the meals that we eat. And again, these plants actually were started last February in the greenhouse here. Then they were grown in pots outside over the summertime and transplanted into this bed in the fall. You can see how big some of the stalks, some of the celery stalks are that we've been harvesting off of these. And they're still going strong. In the fall when we were harvesting our onions, anything that I noticed that had some green still coming out of the bulb, I saved and just planted in here so that we could have green onions over the winter, just to put wherever we want. Baked potatoes, salads. So I just scattered these onions all throughout here, all over the place. Some in with the celery here as well. Lots of green onions for us. This bed here previously had potted pepper plants that we moved in that still had some green peppers on them and were basically finished fruiting for the year, but the peppers hadn't entirely ripened. So we managed to continue harvesting peppers off of those plants. These are the last of those peppers that I just finally harvested. So these will take us through for another week or two, maybe, if they last that long in the fridge. They're mostly hot peppers. I had originally planned to overwinter those pepper plants, but they just were not doing well at all in here. I'm not sure. I gotta do a little bit more research on overwintering pepper plants, but they just withered and started to die. And I figured I could get much better use out of the bed over here. So that's what I'm going to be planting very soon. So very soon in this bed, I'm going to be planting some lettuce and some Swiss chard and some other, just some various salad greens so that we have a nice little bed of salad plant here that we can just come and pull from whenever we want. I'll probably put some radish in here as well. I should note also that I'm going to be installing lights in this area. Sunlight at this time of year is going to be your biggest defeating factor when you're growing inside of a greenhouse. Just with the angle of the sun being really low at this time of year, as well as the shortened daytime sunlight period, lighting is the biggest problem. To show you what I mean, this is all romaine lettuce that I planted in here close to a month ago. You can see how stringy it is. It's very laggy. Just not doing too well overall. This is without supplemental lighting. This is just directly what the sun is giving us. Same thing goes with these radish. These were planted at the same time. And you can see only now are they starting to get their first set of true leaves. So this is taking quite a while. Not really worth our time. I mean, I suppose if you want to take these as microgreens, which I will probably end up doing, that's one thing that you could end up doing with these. Just eat them as microgreens. For the time being, I think I'm going to leave this lettuce just growing, just doing its thing. 
If nothing more, I'll just till it into the ground and it'll be some green compost, green manure to go in there. And along the front of the greenhouse here, I'm going to put a rack up here. This rack, we're going to use trays to grow microgreens, not only for us, but also for the rabbits and for the chickens. As far as watering goes, I'm either hauling water from the house in these two five gallon buckets, or I'm getting snow from outside and melting it on top of the wood stove and just pouring directly into the beds as it melts. So that's what we have going on in the little winter greenhouse now. Up next, lights, shelves, and a few other little goodies going in there that you probably won't want to miss so that we can up our food production on the Wilderstead. Thanks for watching. See you next time.